Hello, Serious Survivor here. Today we're going to talk about several items and we're going to focus a lot on gear. And I know the main focus of the channel is on skills above gear because without the necessary skills, training, and experience, survival in the wild or any type of difficult situation can not only be extremely difficult, but could be almost impossible. We're going to look at different types of gear that can assist you in any type of situation you may encounter. We're going to focus on five different categories of gear here, and what I mean by that is five different sets of gear that I personally built for specific purposes. Now a lot of people have their EDC, their bug out bags, their bug in gear, their inch bags, and whatever other terms that you may like to use to describe these survival kits. Now the purpose of these kits is to get us to a safe location. There aren't many of these kits that we build that are designed to keep us alive indefinitely. And due to the limited amount of weight or mass that we can carry as an individual, then we can't carry too many items with us. And once again, that's where our skills are the determining factor in life or death in an apocalyptic or any type scenario such as that. The first type of gear is our EDC or everyday carry gear. This is the gear that we carry on us as an individual, the items that we physically have on our person at all times. The second type of gear is what I call my auto kit. Now this is a kit that I built specifically for each automobile that I own. And in each of these automobiles or vehicles, then I got a bag, a small bag of kit of items that would help me in a difficult situation if it involved my motor vehicle. Now in these kits, as we're gonna see, there's also some helpful survival items. In addition to those, I carry an extra bag in each vehicle. And these are bags that I leave in the vehicle at all times. And these bags are focused more on survival and for helping me do the basic skills such as build fire, help build, find shelter, things such as that. And we're gonna look at the contents of one of those bags. And the everyday carry items in the first two categories, the vehicle bag and then the bag I keep in my vehicle, the vehicle kit, these are items that stay there all the time. I rotate out the food and water and such as that. But other than that, they stay there, you know, all of the time. The next category is what I call my true bug out bag. This is a bag that I take everywhere I go. No matter which vehicle I'm driving, I carry this bag along with me also. And this bag has enough gear to assist me in maintaining myself and possibly a few people with me for an extended period of time, for several days at a time, possibly into a week or two. Now the whole purpose of these bags is to eventually get me to a safe location. I'm not gonna live off any one of these bags indefinitely, these kits can assist in getting me to the location to where I have my supplies and where I have a better chance of long-term survival. And that's the fifth category. And that's what I call my wilderness or long-term survival bag. And that's a pretty large bag. And it's gonna be in a separate video. This series will be three videos. The first video will talk about our everyday carry items. It will talk about the auto kit. And it will also talk about the auto bag. The next video will be my personal bug out bag, the one I carry everywhere I go. And then the third video in this series will be my long-term survival bag, a bag that is designed to take off into the wilderness or any type of situation and survive permanently. So let's get started. To begin with, our everyday carry items are items that we take with us every day. So I'm just gonna do a simple pocket dump and we're gonna see you know, what we can come up with here. So the items I normally carry on a daily basis are I always take a flashlight of some type. I have a little money there, not much, but a lighter, flashlight, something to help me see if it's dark. A little more change. But I've got here lately to where I also carry a charge bar with me. This charge bar will charge any cell phone or electronic device I have. And in an emergency situation, that could be a very handy piece of equipment. It's very small and you can pick those up for less than five bucks at you know your local thrift store or Walmart or something like that. Other items I carry with me on a daily basis would be my cell phone. Here, I have a Kia Sierra Dual Force. Uh, I like the phone a lot, but whatever phone you like, of course, we're gonna have a means of communication that we take with us. For me, another item that I carry everywhere I go would be my firearm. And in this case, we're looking at my CZ75. Let's clear it. CZ75 P07 duty model. This is a very, very reliable, very accurate firearm. I love it, I'll keep it until the day I die. And this could quite possibly save my life one day. In addition to that, I carry what I call my old faithful pocket knife. And this is just a really good buck. It's, it's an old buck folder. 
and I've had it probably longer than I've had my kids and it has served me extremely well. So for everyday carry items, most of us can't carry too much on our persons, but we can carry things that can keep us alive in a pinch. I have a firearm that I can use, you know, to defend myself or even take an offensive position if necessary. A charge bar to keep my electronic devices functioning long enough for me to get back to my car or to my bug out location. A flashlight, that speaks for itself. A little bit of money, who knows, you might need some money. And I have a fire starter. Now, usually I also carry a couple of other items with me and that would be a multi-tool. Uh, I carry a multi-tool almost everywhere I go and it's a very good idea to carry a multi-tool because it's such a handy device. Extra magazines for my weapon. In this case I have two extra magazines for my CZ which will give me a total of almost 50 rounds. And if 50 rounds can't get me back to my car, I probably need to go another way. We're going to move this gear to the side and then we're going to look at the auto kit that I carry in each of my vehicles. Next we're going to look at the auto kit. Now I purchased this bag, this auto kit from the Wise Company and it's a pretty good kit but I've added a lot to it and it's a really handy kit that every man or woman should have in their car. Something similar to this because as we open it up and look at the contents we're going to see there's a lot of valuable items in here that can really help you in a pinch. So let's look in the first compartment here and what we have here is I have a fire starter. I do believe in bringing a fire starter everywhere I go. A fire starter is one of the most important things you can have. A set of mechanics gloves, a puncture kit to fix punctures in my tires, a four-way kit to uh, remove my valve stem if I have it bust and replace the valve stem. I also have, I didn't bring it out, but I do have a can of Fix-A-Flat that I keep in my car. Opening the kit up, I say I have an additional pair of gloves. I also have a Camillus Titanium Bonded knife here. This is, uh, these are actually really good little knives. They're pretty cheap, like 10 bucks at Walmart, but they hold an edge pretty well. It's 440 steel, so it's, uh, it's fairly durable. I mean, you know, this isn't the best knife on the market, but it's definitely a knife worth spending 10 bucks on to throw in a kit like this. So I do have a knife. And in this kit, I also carry, as you can see, three packs of wise food. Now these are my crunchy granola and crunchy granola and sliced banana sauce. Not like I have a lot here, but I'm not going to starve to death, at least not in the first 24 to 72 hours because I do have some food here. And the good thing about this Wise food, um, I deal in all different brands. Wise is one brand that I have dealt a lot with and have ate a lot of. Uh, their food's pretty good. And you can saturate the food properly with cold water, although it doesn't taste quite as good, but you know, if you have to, then that is a possibility. Now as we open the kit, turn it over and open the kit more, we'll see that we have some uh, additional items in here that can come in really handy. Here, just a black tool tarp, you know, to place over something. Just a little tarp, nothing special there. An emergency or space blanket. Good, if you're getting cold, if you're in cold weather and you're stuck, your car's broken down. A high calorie, this is a high calorie energy bar. These are decent, they're not the best tasting in the world of course, none of them are in my opinion, except for, you know, there are a few brands that are pretty good, but these are alright, they'll give you a lot of calories. You have a tow rope, a pretty strong tow rope, it's a uh, high capacity or high strength I should say, up to 2,000 kilograms, so it's a pretty good little tow rope. A small first aid kit, there isn't much here, um, I haven't even opened this one, but from reading it we can see that there's basically 20 band-aids, a couple of gauze, three packs of alcohol, cleansing pads, and one butterfly closure, and 10 cotton tips. So a little something in case you need it. Some uh, netting that I threw in. There's a uh, survival whistle that came with the kit, so to signal to make noise, then it's a pretty good device, it's pretty loud, and you can signal from a long ways away. And it's five in one, and what it has is a signal and mirror also built into this and not just a signal and mirror and a survival whistle, but you have a compass on the top end of it, so I wouldn't consider it the most accurate compass in the world, but it can give you a general direction. But then again, if you check out the Apocalypse Tip series on the Serious Survivor channel, we have an uh, entire video dedicated to land navigation without a compass. It's very important to be able to navigate throughout the wilderness, urban environments, or anywhere without a compass because you're not always going to have one. Also, you have a fire starter flint in here, and the container itself is waterproof. 
Small roll of duct tape can come in handy for the busted hoses, things such as that. Three pouches of water. In each pouch of water here, you got, uh, I believe it's, it's almost four and a half ounces. So this isn't a lot of water, but it's gonna keep you from dying within the first few days. It's definitely rather have that than anything else, than nothing, I mean. Set of jumper cables. Now we all know that these come in handy from time to time. Nice little, I like these, they're very cheap, but uh, they do work at least for a while, and that's your squeezable handheld flashlights. They're hand powered, so you squeeze them, and you got lights, so you don't have to worry about batteries. Not the sturdiest on the market, but for the price of the kit, you can't really complain. Um, it was less than 40 bucks, and this is a kit that I carry in all my cars, all my vehicles, two trucks and uh, two cars. And some of the things I gear specifically towards each vehicle, which makes sense to do. So know your vehicle and what things are you are likely to have to repair. Busted hoses, broken belts, those type of things, they happen on a regular basis. So this kit, along with a standard tool kit that most guys carry in their car or truck, and you should be able to do all right. If you can't get the problem solved right away, then with our everyday carry items, we had our charge bar if necessary to charge up our cell phone and possibly call for help and some means to, you know, signal for help here. And don't forget the method of building a fire and using the fire itself as a distress signal. Also in my car, I believe in being safe and a lot of people say I carry it overboard. But when you look at all this, you know, it, it folds up pretty neatly. We put all this back in this pack and it doesn't take up much space at all. As we put it all back in here. Now I'm just going to stick it in here to make the video for the sake of the length of the video. And as we can see, so far we're not taking up too much space in our trunk. Now these items are geared to, you know, help you survive in a difficult situation. This isn't a pack that I'm going to carry across the country with me. Maybe you will. So next, there's some other items that I believe should be carried in every vehicle. And let's look at some of these items. Get the case zipped up here. And one of the items is a crowbar. Crowbar comes in extremely handy. This serves multiple purposes. First of all, it's a crowbar, a pry bar, that you can pry something open with. Second of all, it's a hammer. You can use this as a hammer for whatever means necessary. If someone's trapped inside of a vehicle, smash, you can break your way into the window. And third, it's a weapon. So these have multiple uses and there again, doesn't take up much space. So you can keep one of these in your car without having to worry about using too much space. One more thing I also carry in each of my vehicles. Now don't, don't forget to rotate out any food or water that you keep in there. If you keep it in there for a couple months and it's hot and then gets cold and things like that, you want to rotate this stuff out. Rotate it out, buy some new, use the old, eat it. But here, these boxes of uh, 16 different meals, 16 servings here, these can keep an individual or a couple people going for a while. Just remember, it is dependent on water. Do not eat dehydrated food if you do not saturate it with water because it will dehydrate you. It's very bad for you that way. So make sure that you use the water here. And that goes back to the auto bag that we'll be looking at in a minute. Some additional things that personally I carry in my auto and doesn't take up much room. One is a canteen filled with water and this is handy for more than one reason. If I have to leave my vehicle, I have a way to carry at least a day's worth of water with me. Maybe two if I treat it right. And also carry a camo net. As odd as that may sound, you never know what type of environment you're going to find yourself in. And if for some reason you're in a hostile environment and you're trapped in your vehicle, or not necessarily trapped in your vehicle, but stuck with your vehicle, then a camouflage net will allow you to cover that vehicle and be less visible from the air and from the ground. So this is a defensive item. It's nothing that's, you know, necessary. I consider it a luxury item, but it definitely can help you if you're trying to be a little more stealthy or if you're trying to stay hidden from your enemy. There's one more item that I like to include and carry in my vehicle, and this is purely for defensive purposes. And as crazy as it may sound, it's one of these little automated drones with recording capabilities and something you can watch on your cell phone. Now, assuming that there isn't an EMP or some type of attack or a solar event such as that, that fries all of our electronics, then intelligence is gonna be a very valuable asset. When we're stranded, whether it be in the wilderness, the desert, an Arctic region, or in an urban environment, it's gonna be very helpful to know 
how many people are close by, which direction they're in, and whether or not they appear to be friendly or hostile. So this drone could actually be a lifesaver. There are a lot of people in third world countries right now that would love to know what's waiting around the corner on them. So this is an item that's definitely a luxury item. Um, you know, these are pretty cheap. You can get them for around 40 to 50 bucks and sometimes even less. But it's not a necessity. It's just something that I personally keep in my vehicles. And if things ever go south, then I feel like I'm at an advantage with the intelligence factor and some of the supplies I have. So that's most of the items that I keep in every vehicle that I have. Now I have another item that we discussed earlier and this is the auto bag. And in this item, we keep more supplies. And between the supplies that we've already talked about and the supplies in these bags, the whole idea between these type of kits is that we leave these in our vehicle. I'm not carrying this around everywhere I go. I'm not walking through town with a drone and a backpack and a uh, cargo or camouflage netting above my head. I'm simply walking around with my everyday carry items, but I have these in my car knowing that no matter what happens, I stand a very good chance of surviving at least for the initial onset of whatever chaotic events may follow. So let's look at what we have in the bag here. Communication. More communication. These are a little on the lower end here. You're looking at about a 30 mile range with this type of walkie talkie and it's only good for people on the same frequency. Members of my family have these. We try to keep them charged and you know we use them if necessary and that's one thing about these type of kits or any type of kit if you just pack it throw it in your closet or in your car and leave it for a year to two years some of the things that you put in it may not be good anymore. So remember rotate out your items as necessary especially the food and the water because those items can potentially spoil rather quickly under the wrong circumstances. So let's look at the bag here and see what other items that we might find. And in it, one of the items I always like to carry and keep is some extra clothing, just in case. A couple of extra fixed blade knives. This is just a cheap little knife, one I threw in there. Zip ties. Zip ties are always handy. Zip ties can help in a multiple, multiple types of situations. Another thing that I have, and I got this pretty cheap, this was only 20 bucks, and it's a solar battery charger. But not only is it a solar battery charger, but it will provide has a charging port for devices similar to this for my cell phone and other electronic devices. So it gives me the ability to keep my means of communications going for a little bit longer here. So it's a pretty good device. Then again, these are all luxury items. So as we look further into the pack, we'll see another item that I'm personally really big on in. That's another firearm. In this case, it's my Glock 21. I like the Glock 21. I like the Glock because it's a very reliable firearm. That particular version, the 21, is a 45 ACP. It's a high capacity uh, firearm, so I'm going to get multiple shots downrange. Um, it's very handy, very reliable, and it can definitely save you in a difficult situation. And I do carry a leg holster so that I can wear this out of a tough environment if necessary. Because what we have to think about, you hear a lot of people saying, don't look too tactical, don't appear too tactical, and we don't want to walk around dressed like Rambo. But in a shit hit the fan situation, you're going to do what you've got to do to get back to where you need to be. And if that means strapping on a leg holster so that people around you know you're going to shoot them if they mess with you, then that's what you're going to have to do. Firearm is a definite necessity. Without a firearm, then your chances of survival have uh, drastically diminished at that point. Also in this kit, in this particular bag, have another medical kit. And this medical kit is not an extensive medical kit as far as I'm not going to perform surgery on anyone. But it does contain a lot of the most commonly used items like antiseptic wipes, alcohol wipes, you got cleaning wipes, you got iodine, you have bandages of different size, band-aids, things such as that. It's not a heavy duty kit, if you will, but it's something that helps me with minor cuts and wounds, minor injuries. Also in this kit, in this bag, I also like to carry more food. More food. I eat a lot, so it pays to have a lot of food on hand. And I like these types of uh, pouches. They're airtight. They last forever. These types here from Wise, they last about 25 years. So they're going to they're gonna be good for a long time. But keep in mind, if you put them in your car, it gets hot today, it gets cold tomorrow, it gets hot the next day, then cold again. 
you're going to want to keep an eye on these and rotate them out. Uh, because worst comes to worst by stocking these, you've always got a meal. If you don't feel like cooking one night, boil a pot of water and fix you up some wise food. So with this extra food, it actually extends the amount of time that I can survive without having to rely on things such as hunting, fishing, and scavenging. Although hunting, fishing, and scavenging are a very effective means of gathering food and supplies, which we'll talk about in later videos, but it's always good to have what you need on hand too. And here we see another small kit that is uh, put together here. And this is just basically a, a dust mask. It's not gonna filter out contaminants or anything, but if you're in a situation that's that's the air is heavily contaminated or heavily polluted this can at least help a little bit a cup in here so that we can boil our water purify our water and cook our meals the meals we have here you have some uh, different types of things in here some water purification tablets some matches another five-way or five purpose whistle that has a signal mirror built in um, a lanyard on it it's a handy little device you're going to have a squeezable or recharge hand charge flashlight pretty handy device to have now these aren't the most expensive items in the world so they're not going to last you from now until civilization has been rebuilt but they're going to keep you alive for a little while they're going to get you going get you started so it's good to have as much as you can but remember all these items no matter how good they are all these items never take the place of the skills that you have skills are the most important factor more food and more matches to start a fire. So as you can see with these kits here, and as we put this kit back together, let's put it back together and see how much space we're looking at taking up in the trunk of your car or behind the seat of your truck. Although we are taking up a decent amount of space, when we factor in what we've got here, factor in what we got here we got a survival bag that has several days of food in it has a change of clothes in it it also has a weapon in it which you can uh, be a lifesaver we know that it has a lot of good supplies in it we have a drone that we can do our own reconnaissance gain our own intelligence with a camouflage netting the importance of this if you're stranded in your vehicle if you're in hostile territory you don't want anyone to know where you're at and one of the ways you do that is by disguising your location cover and concealment two important topics this can give you a little concealment. It's not going to provide any cover, but it will conceal your location uh, from an overhead view. If someone else is flying a drone, you might can evade detection of that drone by using something similar to this. We also have more food, very important. Not just having the food is the important factor, but having the peace of mind that you have the food does take some stress off of you. Knowing that you have enough food here between these these kits that we see here to last one individual probably three weeks then that in itself is going to take one of the survival factors off of the table for three weeks you're worried about fire you're worried about shelter you're worried about food and you're worried about water well food we've got taken care of just for a little while anyway shelter we do have a camo net that's not going to provide much shelter but this is a car kit so we're going to assume you're still near your vehicle so you do have some type of shelter and with the fire starter that we had here and the matches that we have in here we can build a fire and remember once you build a fire it's important to keep that fire going don't build a fire today let the fire go out and then try and rebuild it tomorrow night it could be raining it could be colder a lot of things can happen but if you're not worried about detection, if you're able to build a fire and your, your concern is not with being detected by other people seeing that fire, keep that fire going. Don't let it extinguish. We have our canteen and web belt here so that we can, if we do decide to leave the car, then we have a lot of supplies to take with us. A lot of these supplies, if we stay at the location for any amount of time, they will be gone. The heaviest part's going to be gone. The food's going to be gone. The water's going to be gone. So we're going to be carrying basic supplies at that time, which makes our everyday carry items, as we've seen before, just fit easily into our pockets. 
With this setup here, you're looking at you've probably got about three to three hundred and fifty dollars, not counting the price of the firearms. Now the two firearms themselves, the CZ and a Glock, you're looking at close to nine hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. But besides that, the other survival gear that we have here, you can get for less than three hundred bucks probably if you shop around. Remember, tailor the kit for your specific needs. You may not need everything that I have in my kit. I may not need everything I have in my kit, but I have the peace of mind at knowing that having developed the skills necessary to survive with nothing, then surviving with gear is going to be much, much easier. But the whole purpose of this gear is to defend ourselves if we're at our vehicle. And then if we have to leave our vehicle to be able to stay alive for a little while, which brings us to category three, the third bag that I take. And it's the bag that I carry everywhere I go. And this bag is intended on keeping me alive for an extended period of time. And we're gonna look at the contents of that bag in the very next video. It may seem like a little bit of overkill here, but with this gear, I will survive. And with the training and the skills and knowledge, I will thrive. So any comments, any suggestions, please leave them below. Check out the description for some excellent links to sites that you can pick up these items at at a pretty good price and also for more information. And check out the Serious Survivor website, SeriousSurvivor.com. We're adding new downloads daily and these downloads include U.S. military field manuals from combat to medical to even more. Every type of manual that you can imagine, we've got a download of some type of that manual. Over 5,000 downloads right now, all available for free. We're not charging for anything. So if you like the channel if you like the videos please like subscribe and share and keep an eye on the channel we'll be coming out with many more videos very soon so for now serious survivor out